Goldman Sachs makes some of the most popular research reports in the finance industry and you might notice they love using charts and visuals. So let's recreate three of their most popular visuals in Excel and by the end of this video you'll have enough knowledge to make most of their charts completely on your own. So let's get into it. First up we have this waterfall chart over here and what makes this one slightly tricky is the colors there seem to have very low opacity and also the labels there have a plus or a minus as well as a pp on the end so we'll need to learn how to format that as well as the two vertical lines which we'll also need to learn how to do so let's take a look on excel and here's the excel file that we'll be using which you can download for free in the video description if you want to follow along so we have the image here for reference and the first step is to insert a waterfall chart so we can select the table with Control a there and insert under this part here we want to go for the waterfall that's gonna be the first step let me just resize this so i've now resized this and i want to get rid of this legend as well as this title simply by hitting on the lead there and we also want to reduce the overall size of the font so instead of having that 14 there let's change that to something like an 8 and hit enter great once we've done that, you'll notice here that the total seems to be above where it should just start from zero there instead of adding to this. So we can simply select it by double clicking, right click and going to set as total. That's going to add it to the bottom there. We can also get rid of these grid lines simply by hitting on delete. And you'll notice that for the X and the Y axis, we have these grid lines that are sticking out. So let's go ahead and add those as well. We can select the area and right click, going to format axis. And from here under tick marks, we're gonna want a major type. This is going to be one on the outside. So we have the lines sticking out. Same thing over here, we want one on the outside. So tick marks outside there. Then for the labels, we wanna have the minus sign or the plus sign as well and the PP at the end. So let's reformat that. We can simply select on one of them, go to right click, format data label. And from here, all the way at the bottom under number, instead of general, we wanna switch that to a custom. And here we'll be able to type the format code that we want. So we'll first delete this one and we want to do plus 0, 0.0 PP, cause that's the format that we want. And then we're gonna do a semicolon there and now for the negatives, it's just minus 0, 0.0 PP. Once we have that formatted, we can just hit on add and you'll notice that it's being formatted correctly, just like over here. We can copy that format code. And then when we go to the next label, we simply wanna paste it under custom. So let me fast forward how I do all of these. Awesome. Now we have the formatting looking good. We want to get rid of these grid lines right in the middle, the ones that are stepping up and down. So we just want to try to select them, right click format data series, and we don't want to show the connector lines. And we also want to make this spacing a bit wider. So we can change that to something like a 90 and hit enter. Then we can work on these colors. So this first one, we can go over to the fill color here and just go for a dark blue. While the last one is going to be in a bright red, we can also select that from over here. And these middle ones, we're just gonna select in a lightish blue, maybe like this one right here. Let me do these other ones. Great, and then this last part, you can see that it has a very low opacity. So it's gonna be in the bright red like we've been using, but here it looks way too bright so we can go under more colors and you can see the transparency down below. We can raise that, let's say to around 60, just to see what that looks like and hit on okay. Now it looks quite similar. While we're here, let's also change the label colors. So this one right here is going to be in dark blue and this one is going to be in red. And then we can work on these two vertical lines. And for this, we're just going to insert some shapes by going to insert and under shapes here, we wanna insert some straight lines. If you hit the shift key, it's gonna make sure it stays perfectly straight. So let's go ahead and put it right around up till there and just make sure it's well centered. 
We can change the outline here to something like a gray. And we can also increase the weight, which is the thickness basically, to around um, 3 fourths. So it looks more like it. We can also select it and just hit Control Shift and drag it across to the other area, which is the end of the forecast right around here. That's most of the chart done. Let me fast forward how I do the title and the other minor areas using a few text boxes simply by going to insert and under shapes I'll add a text box right there. Basically this one's gonna be up above here for the title and another for the subtitle. If this background grid lines are annoying you, you can just go to Alt W V G. That's a shortcut. It's the same thing as going to the view tab and ticking on grid lines. There you have it with a few final touches. That's pretty much the first chart done. At the end of this video, we'll go over one bonus trick 90% of Excel users don't know about. But first, let's go over this table visual over here. And what makes this one difficult is all of the different number formattings. You can see that some have X's for multiples, others have percentages and negative formats in parentheses there, and also the baseline area seems to have a strange highlight. So let's go over how to do it. Over here is the table that we're looking at, and we basically have all of the numbers, but they're formatted all completely wrong. So let's first highlight the relevant areas. So this part over here, we're gonna go to Alt H H. That's basically the shortcut to the highlight area. You can also select it from here, obviously. And this is one. Then for this part right here, Control Shift right to select it, and Alt H H again. And we're gonna highlight it in blue, in dark gray as well, sorry. And this last part in blue, so Alt H H. And we'll select a blue color that fits us. Let's suppose that it's this one right here. We can hit Control B to bolden. Same thing down below here. So Shift Space, Control B. Let me actually change this Alt H H to a slightly lighter color. Maybe I go for this one right here. And then all of these here seem to have italics. So we'll hit Control I to italicize them. And this whole column C also seems to be boldened. So we can do that by selecting that whole area here, Shift Up Arrow and Control B. Then you might notice that some parts have indentations like this one right here. We can do that by hitting Alt H6. That's basically this button right here. Same thing, Alt H6. And down over here for both of these, Alt H6 once. And the second one, Alt H6 again. Now it's looking slightly better. So let's work on the actual numbers. These very first ones, you can see they're in percentage format. You can hit Alt H P for percentage there, or you can also click on this button up here. But you'll notice that the minus 15 should be in parentheses. There should also be a bit of space between the number and the percentage. So to make this a lot more customizable, we can hit on Control 1. And from here, we want to go under Number, Custom, and under Type here, we want to put a space. So you can see what that looks like. And then a semicolon there. And for the negatives, we want it to be in parentheses, like a zero, and also in percentage format. And then just hit on OK. You can see that that's looking exactly the same as over here. So let's move to the one right below. So Control Shift right to select it. Control one again, this time for a multiple. So we just want to have the number, a space, and an X there. You can see what that sample looks like. Hit on enter. And now it's looking exactly the same. Same thing with this part here. We just want the percentage though. So we can just do Alt H P. There's no need for that extra spacing like the one above. This one right over here, same thing. So Alt H P. But for this one down below, it's slightly different because we have that space and we also have an extra decimal. So we can go to Control 1 under custom here. It's 0.0, .0 because we have that extra decimal, space, percentage. That should do it for us. Hit enter. You can see what that's looking like, where it's exactly the same. For this one, we want it to be a multiple again. So we can go control one. And under custom, again, under type here, we're just going to add an X at the end. Great. This one's fine as is. 
and then these two down over here well this first one is the same as above here so we can select this area Control c to copy it then down over here we want to paste special we can do that by going up over here under paste special the shortcut there is Control alt v and from here we just want to paste the formats and hit enter we don't want the highlight though so we can go to alt h h and hit n for no fill this last one is a simple percentage so we can just go to select it and alt h p same thing over here just select it alt h p great we have all of this done so let's work on this title area up here first we want to add a border so alt h b that's the same thing as going up over here and we want it to be a thick bottom border we can do that with this one right here then we can work on this final baseline area so we want to add a highlight color there in dark blue and we also want to change the font color to a white there now for the border that surrounds all of this area here we basically want to add a thick border on the outside and we also want it to be a specific color so the line color we want it to be a blue we can just select the whole area there and now we can see what that looks like so that's all looking very very similar awesome that's the second visual done and now you've learned how to format both for multiples as well as for percentages with parentheses for negatives as you're watching this video if you're interested in breaking into the finance industry you can consider checking out our complete finance evaluation course where you'll learn all the essentials of accounting, finance, valuation, and financial modeling on Excel. In the course, first we cover financial statement analysis using Apple's real annual report as an example. Then we get into financial modeling through a three statement model on Apple. And after that, we begin the valuation phase where we go over a discounted cash flow, a comparable company's valuation, and a present transactions valuation on Adobe, looking at the real financial statements to eventually derive a valuation range. Lastly, we'll show you how to present an investment thesis using a stock pitch format. So if you're interested, check out the link in the description below. All right, back to the video. Moving to the third visual, we have this line chart. And what makes this one tricky is that it's got all of those different markers and it's also got some gray shading in the back for adding further context. So let's take a look at how to do that. First up over here, you can see we have the data. So let's just select it with Control A. And under Insert, we simply use the Recommend area to insert a line chart. This first one makes sense. Let me fast forward how I resize that. Great. I just deleted the title there as well and now for the access here it has to go up to 80% so we can right click format axis and the maximum should be 0.8 which represents the 80% also down over here you'll notice that we have all of the years but instead we want to skip to every other year we can do that by under access options here going to date axis and from here the measure is going to be two instead of one and hit enter great now we're ready to work on all of these markers so we can just select that area there and then go to right click format data series and under fill here we want to select the line and let's make that a dark blue like the one that we've been using now we can work on the marker and under marker options we want it to be a built-in marker that's a circle not a square so let's select a circle down there we want it to be a solid fill in white and the border we want it to be in dark blue so that seems to be making sense nice let's get rid of these grid lines and add the data labels by going to right click and going to add data labels for these they're primarily on the top half so let's go ahead and right click format data labels and put them above now feel free to move some of these individually if you feel like they should be on the bottom area simply by dragging and dropping the font size here seems to be slightly too big so let me change that by hitting at something like an 8 
now that's more like it. One more thing you might notice is that the lines seem quite smooth, while over here they're a lot more rigid. If you want to get rid of that, we can right click Format Data Series, and then under Fill here, if we scroll down to the bottom, you'll find this option of Smooth Line. That's the one we want to tick on. Now you can see it's looking a lot smoother. This last one, let's click on it and make sure you click on it individually, not with the other ones. We want to change the fill color for it. So under marker, we want to change the color of just that one to a red. Now you can see what that looks like. Also, we have these grid lines that have the outer ticks on both sides. So let me fast forward how I do those. Great, now we're ready to do this final part, which is the shading in the back. And I think here that they're using a shape. So we're simply gonna go to insert and select a rectangular shape like this one which is simply going to drag along the area that we're interested in. Let me just move that around a bit. And now we can change the fill color of it to a very light gray and add no outline, kind of like that. And to duplicate these, we can go to Control Shift and drag it along. And to make it smaller, we can do Shift and the left arrow there and just drag it wherever you think it should fit. Let me fast forward how I do these. Awesome, now we have these three shapes, but there's a bit of a problem as we can't actually see the chart. What we're gonna do then is right click on the chart and hit bring to front. Now we can't see the shapes, but luckily we can reduce all of the fill color to no fill. And now you can see what that looks like. It's looking a lot better. Finally, for these text boxes, we can just go to insert under shapes. We're just gonna want to insert a text box this first one up over here, and we wanna get rid of the colors. So shape fill, we're gonna go for no fill, and shape outline, we're gonna go for no outline. And we can simply type the same thing, so let me fast forward that. Awesome, that's the chart pretty much done, and just like that, you've managed to learn how to insert markers, as well as how to add some shapes in the back for further context. And finally, the bonus trick that you might not know about Let's suppose that we want to add all of these charts into some kind of dashboard or cover page like we have over here. Now you might think of simply copying the chart, but the problem with that is that once the data updates, the chart is not going to update with it. So instead, a better way is to use this camera tool up over here. If you don't have it, just go to this drop down and under more commands, under the quick access toolbar, go from popular to all commands and simply type camera. That should show it there and just click on add if you don't have it already. Hit on okay there. Now, all you wanna do is select the area you wanna take an image of. Let's suppose that it's simply this area over here. I'm just gonna click on that camera icon. Once I've done that, I can head over to the dashboard and click down over here. Now you can see that I have that exact same icon. The difference is that now if I change this to say 25 over here, you can see that move. Let me actually make it 55. And then when we go to the dashboard, that number is also updated as well. Doing it this way is not only going to save you time, but also avoid any errors. Congrats on making it to the end. Now you've learned how to build three very different visuals. So that should give you good skills for any future charts you wanna make. But if you wanna practice some more, check out this video over here to make charts like McKinsey or take our Excel course over here. Hit a like and a subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.